What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to take a look at Bishi Bashi. This game was requested recently by somebody and I said, you know what, let me look at it and, and add it in. And I found two versions, Bishi Bashi channel, which uh, is pretty recent. And then the Bishi Bashi, which is a bit older. I think it's from like 2010 or so. Um, you know, this one's pretty straightforward. If you look at the controller for Bishi Bashi, let me pull that up here. This is basically what it looks like. Um, on an, in an arcade setting, um, you have three buttons on the bottom and then this yellow one on top. That is, that is, this is going to be for the Bishibashi, right? And uh, the way I mapped it, if you look at something like a tank stick or any other arcade control panel, is I did the three buttons down here with the top one in the center here, just to mimic the way the real one is. So you have the three at the bottom and then the yellow one up there. Um, and then on an Xbox controller, same thing, three across the bottom and then the yellow one here. But the colors are not going to match because on the Xbox, this one is uh, blue and this one is red. And here it's backwards. Uh, this one is red and this one is blue. But the order is correct. All right. So that's what you're looking at when you're looking at the mapping. And uh, for for the other game, Bishi Bashi Channel, that one gets a little bit more tricky because you had three buttons, right? The red, this one, which is a green. You can see that it's green. Or well, this one, you can see that it's green. It lights up, right? So red, green, and blue. However, this green button is also pretty much a spinner. You can spin it. So this game is going to be a lot more user-friendly for those of you who have a spinner and or a trackable. You can probably get away using the trackball as well as the spinner. Um, but I'm going to talk about that a little bit more here. So just know that it's three buttons. All three could be pushed in, but this one is also a spinner. And you actually do use that while playing the games, obviously. Uh, not all of them, but some of the games require that you give this a spin. All right. So just keep all of that in mind. Um, uh, let me go ahead and show you, um, you know, Bishibachi, the Bishibachi. That one's going to be configured for you. Um, and so is this one. That one is actually uh, four players, right? So um, you can, if you have a four player panel or four Xbox controllers, it's gonna work. Uh, but uh, this one's pre-configured. This one is pre-configured for the arcade, uh, uh, for an arcade uh, control panel. If you're using Xbox controllers, you're gonna have to configure it. Now let me, sh let me show you that. So let's go ahead and start the game here in Rocket Launcher. You can start it from Hyperspin if you want. And hopefully the sound is not overpowering because this game has weird sound where like it doesn't really, the Windows volume doesn't control it. So let's see how, how that goes. But I think I, I lowered it correctly in my in my volume mixer here. All right, so first off, um, you know, it's you insert credits like normally with your credit button, but then it says to press, uh, to push the button to get started. And if you notice that is the blue button. So that is the one, the third one. You can see on the screen there, you have left, center, and right, right? So it's gonna be that blue one. So if you remember, I told you guys that it's the bottom row of buttons on the control panel. So that would be the third button. So that would be, that would be the um, F, I, I believe, let me see. Or is it, oh no, this one's across the top. I forgot to mention that as well, guys. That um, for Bishibashi channel, I did them across the top row of buttons, being that there's only three buttons in the real game. The other one I did across the bottom so that you can have that, you know, that same layout as the real thing with the three buttons and then the one on top. But on this one is the three buttons up top. So this would be the third button on top row would be the blue button. All right. So let's say you wanted to configure this. Uh, you want to change the way the buttons are configured, the way I send it out, or you need to configure a Mac, an Xbox controller, you're going to press F4. Now, remember that if you have a Logitech keyboard, you have to press the FN key first. So FN, then F4, it's going to bring this up here, and you can go ahead and map everything how you want it. You can see here that it has player one red, player one green, player one blue, and then disc minus and plus that just means this the the spinner the spinner button right so r is this one green is this one when you push it down blue is this one and then disc minus and plus is that spinner left or right and that is digital all right digital meaning your arcade buttons 
Um, the real way to do that is to use analog. But I'm going to get to that in a second here. So you have your red button. If you want to map it to whatever else, you just hit bind and you press whatever button you want to map that to. In my case is the first top row button to the left. So if I press that, that is the letter A. The next button is B. The next one is C. And then I mapped the disk left and right, you know, the spinner to the end F, which are bottom row, first button and a third button. I skipped that middle button. So when you press those, you're going to go left and right on that spinner. I don't think you can really play the games effectively with digital uh, assignments, though. You really want to get get that analog going. And then over here, you just have your, your other players, player two, you have player three and you have player four. You don't really have to touch anything else but that. Um, here you have a service uh, input. I mapped it to F1 and a test to F2, and I'm going to show you how to go in there in a second. You can just, the, the only thing you really would do in there is adjust the volume to your liking. If uh, you just don't want to deal with your TV uh, remote or your monitor remote or whatever. So yeah, like I said, the best way to do the spinner, because a spinner is essentially an analog control, is to go to analog. And then here you see that as I move my mouse, this percentage here is moving. Basically what you do is the player one, you go over here to bind, and then here it's going to show you different devices that you have on your system. Right now I have an Xbox controller plugged in, so it shows up there. And here are my mice. So if I click on this one, it's moving. If I click on this one, it's not moving. So obviously that is not the right one. So I would go back to this one. Let's say I want—I was trying to do my mouse. In your case, uh, you know, a mouse or a spinner. Uh, I'm sorry, a trackball or a spinner. Both are basically mice, all right? So you would just select whatever device here and you would move it until you see this react. And then you wanna make sure you set this to X, all right? And lastly, you wanna play with the sensitivity. And this is something you really have to play with to uh, tweak it to where it works correctly. Like right now, the way I have it, the mouse doesn't work very good when we go into the game and I'm gonna show you in that in a minute. Um, I've seen people suggest to bring this way down, but not too much, so just Keep in mind that probably the lower settings around here are where you want to be. Um, that's for you to play with. All right. So once you have that set up, you just close it. And again, you can select your mouse here. You can select a spinner. You can select a, uh, a trackball or you can use your Xbox controller analog joysticks. You know, that's up to you guys to play with. Uh, I'm going to close that up. And so this really, really would be friendly for... Um, you know, uh, for a single player, really, because, you know, nobody has four spinners or four trackballs. You know, this is a very specialized control panel on this in this game. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a, that's basically it, guys. I'm just going to go back to buttons now because I told you guys about the Xbox, but it's the same thing here. We're we're mapping it to like buttons on a control panel. If you want to use the buttons on an Xbox controller, again, you go to player one red, for example, you hit bind and you press the button on your Xbox controller and boom, it just mapped it. All right. So it's as easy as that. Let me set that back to my control panel here. And uh, when you're done, you just X out of this. And now let's go ahead and try to play a little bit here. So I'm going to press the blue button, which is my uh, top row, third button. There we go. Press it again. Press it again. And then this is a good spot right here to test your, your spinner or your, you know, trackball or your mouse or whatever you use for that analog. If you can figure that because you have to move this crane side to side. And actually that's moving pretty good right now. It's not too bad. It's a little bit sluggish though. And then if I use my digital buttons that I map those to, that moves pretty pretty smoothly. Um, but it's it's different here where you're not really doing anything than when you're actually playing a game. I I haven't tested this game too much, but I found the digital buttons, you know, to mimic the uh, spinning motion of that button, not to be too good when you're actually playing a game. I'm just skipping all of this stuff. We're gonna see what this first game is all about. And it always explains to you what you have to do in the game. So how to play, and it tells you how to play here. Press the same color button as the person who raised their head. Pretty straightforward. So yeah, see that game doesn't seem like it requires a spinner. So you don't really have to worry about it in that game. Oh. 
I'm confused because I'm using my keyboard right now. So I don't really know what's what. There you go. Anyway, you get the point. So I'm just going to go ahead and exit this game. And then the Bishibashi is a lot more straightforward. Um, it doesn't have a spinner, so you don't need to worry about any of that stuff. Um, I guess I could start up here real quick. Just remember, like I said, um, on this one, I mimicked this controller. So it's going to be the bottom buttons. On the other one, it was, it was the top buttons. And this one is three across the bottom plus this one. On the other one, it's just the three. And then you have your, your spinner left and spinner right. So let me go ahead and start this other game here. Let me try it again. It seems like it was stuck in a loop there. Um, that's another thing I actually have to mention on this game. This one is, is glitchy, so you can get stuff like that that happens. And, and the other thing that happens most of the time is the screen doesn't go full screen, and you just have to see like that. You just have to quit it and start it up a few times, unfortunately. That's just the way it is. So let me try that. It's still not full screen, so we're just going to do it over and over again. So the kind of things you have to put, you know, you have to put up with sometimes when you're doing these emulations. There we go. It's good now. So insert credit. And it's telling you to press the yellow button. So remember, that's the top row center button. Uh, but that is it. Hope you guys enjoy. And I'll see you guys on the next one.